Okay, okay. Very easy. Easy star, easy. Easy star, welcome. You go see the Bob Marley movie yet? No, I didn't see it, but I'm going to say, welcome to the 37th episode <laughs> Of John Exel with the bad Caribbean <laughs> born in trouble accent. You remember my bad Caribbean wow. accent? You guys remember my bad Caribbean accent when I used to walk around saying, This is my bad Caribbean accent. And then I would just like go off and say a whole bunch of bad things with a bad Caribbean accent. It's Bachman. Fortunately, I don't remember that period. Yeah, that's that's horrible. You don't remember that period, Grant? Do you no. remember that period? No. No. No, no. no but it it's it sounds it's it on brand. Like, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I insulted everyone at one point in my life. But that's, that's what right. we and, did. And, and only and only the white people took it personally and tried up a, a, a <laughs> supermarket shopping cart on your head. They did try to drop up a, a supermarket. Shopping cart on my head once. That it actually happened, and you were right there. Yeah, I couldn't make that up. You're right there. Yep. They failed. Anyway, on your exploits. They failed. Yeah, sometimes things like that happen in the '80s. Boy, you had fun. So, fellas, how you feeling this week, man? What's going on? It's a beautiful day, man. It's been a beautiful week. From Detroit, Michigan, the city of Wayne Kang, Mr. Grant yeah. Lancaster. What up, though? What up, though? And of course, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, parts unknown, Mr. Brooks with the good bucks. It is a beautiful day in Zamunda. What's going on, Rob? Hey, no, man, I was, my, my body's betraying me a little bit today. It's not happy. I don't know why. How do you feel? What, what do you mean your body's betraying you? Uh, my hips. The, the hip, I, you know, I have a bad hip. Mm. But it's the other hip today that has me walking like a 90-year-old man. Mm. That's special. Wow. Yeah. Been to the chiropractor already. It got a little bit better, but not better enough. Overcompensating. Is, Is this one of those woke up with something? Yeah, were you trying? Did you try to left, know. left, right, left? Nah, I, I, well, I don't well. know. I was traveling yesterday morning. I've okay. been traveling a lot lately, so I think it's from sitting from sitting in airplanes for too long. It wasn't like airplanes and buses. It wasn't. Possible. It wasn't from a surprise left, left, right. No, 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 no. no, no. no. You discover something new. I try. We're not trying to box anybody out. No. That's what flips, that's what shoot flips are for. We're trying we try to keep that to a minimum. Okay. Okay. You uh okay. you uh first class? Nah. Nah. Sometimes business class. Okay. But yeah, you got yeah, you gotta get the bigger seat, Holmes. Even even in the bigger seat, man. Like it's like the wide seat helps in first class, mm-hmm. but like most of those seats are so worn out now. Like right. There's no oomph to them. Like you just. Yeah. 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 You sitting on the frame. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. I feel these, that. these are right in that style of over. Oh, been over. Been over. They do not care about you up there. Mm hmm. That is not a luxury just, experience anymore. They're no. just trying to get you from point A to point B. I mean, I, I saw wish- the other. They they raise baggage fees again. Of course. Yeah. What they need to do is get rid of carry on shit. Yeah, just rid of eliminate. Carry-on? Just eliminate it altogether. Just go to a new city naked. That's no, what you're I'm saying. I'm saying just... Check. I'm saying check your bags. Every, everything gets checked underneath. Elim- eliminate carry on. Get people on the plane as fast as possible. Off the plane as fast as possible. Well, you you kind of have to have a wardrobe. Um, a wardrobe budget for when you get to wherever your destination is now. No, right, you're gonna check, he's you're gonna you check your bags. bags. He said everything goes underneath. What takes so long getting in and out of the plane is people getting their bags up and out of the uh, the overhead bins. Like that's the, the non-professional travelers 
like to watch them deal with that. Oh, I am I am I I'm like my bag six rows back. I, 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 right. And this is too big. I don't know how to fit this in. like that. All that is just there's way too much of that going on. You know, the people who just try they get as soon as the plane parks, they just try to bum rush to the front. Like, there's a way mm-hmm. to do this. We're gonna be orderly about it. Like, just breathe. You're in row twenty six. It's gonna be another. It's gonna be five minutes, that ten minutes before you get out of here. Just relax, bro. Right. Yeah. Well, of course, got a business call right now, but you got a business call. Yeah, I can't hey, really tell you about it. Huh? Get money. Can't really. I can't really do anything about it. I just have to. Got a business you doing at this hour, homie? You know, whole business. It's well, after eleven. Get money. It's whole business. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna take this. You guys, like, you know, keep going with the co- with the call for a minute. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, like, like that's the way. suddenly he's the plug now. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're going, yeah. Because it's called you get into the clock now. Yeah. Like, all of a sudden, JK is the plug. Yeah. Yeah, Johnny Escobar. Ah. Uh, <laughs> and maybe he can replace yes. that. May replace that chair next. Get himself a right. real throne. <laughs> so, so the, I'm gonna tell you the reason I asked you that is because I had my first wake up pain. Like I, I didn't have pain the day before. I went to bed, woke up, and I was damn near a cripple. You just I, had your first. I, yeah, I just damn, had my congratulations, first. Congratulations, bro! You've been taking yeah. care of yourself because I've been having yeah. them shits for a lot of years. <laughs> yeah, this is my first one. So I can remember I was talking to my cousin, man, and I was telling him I could because we was talking about this pain. I was telling him, I was like, yo, I can remember like my body changing when I hit 43. And I had to start doing some different things. But then once and I was fine. And then when COVID came, you know, the effects of COVID, man, we're gonna be feeling that shit for the next fucking for the rest of our lives. Cause I done fell apart since COVID happened. Yeah, what do you mean? Uh, physically? Physically, yes. yes. Yeah, I've fallen apart since COVID. And it's so hard to get it back, man. Like once you once you hit that, like once you once you hit that 50, it's hard to get it back, bro. Yeah, you have to start with honestly, you have to start with diet when you get older. Yeah. And that's yeah. like really, that's really like what the biggest change is. Like, cause you know, I, for me, like I've been in, I've been in this for a long time. And um, right now, like I got into a car accident, so I'm going through, th- through therapy. So I can't lift the way I normally mm-hmm. would be able to lift and do things the way that I normally would be able to do things. But what I'm doing is that I'm just watching my intake and I'm trying to go to a more, um, vegetable based you know i hate to give rob that credit and everything but because you know but rob didn't invent vegetables so you know fuck you, rob, vegetables, know, but you know you probably thought you did yeah no no, no 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 you know that ain't my style okay i'm not invent okay. vegetables okay you know well you know I'm, I'm doing more leafy greens and stuff like that mm-hmm you know, fruits and things that I can, that my body can oxidize to try to keep the pounds off. Right. You know, and how's that working out? I mean, listen, I'm a big boy anyway. Either way, I'm always going to be a big boy. I'm like two, I'm like probably closer to like 235 now, 230, 235, which is a natural weight for me at this age. That's been pretty much me for the past 20 years with not a, with not carrying a lot of fat. So mm-hmm. Jim was surprised when he saw me in person. You know, that was the one thing that like, you know, cracked me up because he was like, you're really not fat. <laughs> I'm like, nah, bro. I'm like, I'm, I'm not fat. He's like, yo. A very Gene thing to say. It's right. very Gene. Yeah, he was like, yo, bro. He's like, you're really not fat. Because he just always assumed that I was like, nah. It's just like my, my training was different and everything. And you can do you can do the same thing with your training, Grant. You know, so. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I so I, I uh, my job changed and like got me in a in a much more uh, stationary kind of spot. So I, I I'm just not able to do everything that I used to do. 
And then with Lay getting older, you know what I mean, hustling her back and forth, doing what she got to do. You know, it just it just takes a toll on my on my regiment. You know, I, 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 mean, I never I never eat point, my daughter is, um, was doing the dance stuff. Her dance studio yeah. also had fitness classes at the same time. Oh man! So I was able to like as soon as once I realized it, like oh, I mean I can go take a boot camp class while she's doing that. Instead of yeah. just sitting there reading. Oh, it's tremendous. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Life saving, in fact. See, for me, I get my exercise like on days like tomorrow when I have to go out to the city. And, you know, I have to do a lot of walking, you know, right. which is, you know, and I, I have to keep it. And, like, for me, like, especially now, I have to keep it to a minimum and hope that it doesn't, like, impact me too much and everything. But, you know, I like to continue to walk and move around. I feel like that's what really keeps me like more healthy and more young than anything else. People in the Bible used to thousands of years ago, they used to wake up and they used to do physical things where our bodies aren't meant to be sedentary. Right. You know, and I always laugh. I always kind of laugh at people when they say, Oh, look, you know, these people are doing so much work or look at this guy getting up and you don't want to get up and like walk to the kitchen for your fucking self. And really, the joke's on you. You're kind of killing yourself by staying mm-hmm. sedentary. That's the way it works. Actual lazy that God don't like. God don't like that lazy. Yeah. And, you know, the, the way that life is, man, it just kind of leans toward that laziness. You know what I'm saying? With, you know, like, Uber, like you don't even have to, you don't have to cook. You don't have to go to the grocery store. You don't have to, you know, do you don't have to really do too much of anything you know people will bring you everything that you want if you're willing to pay the price for it it's like the future it's like the future in marketing marketing is all about you everyone is like you know we're all stars now that's why there's no need for stars or people who are interesting i've just been watching how they're moving everything towards ai and and the thought process that it really that people go through in order to accept what is AI now? Are you ready for the AI gig economy? You know, are you ready for everything to be the same? Mm-hmm. Is essentially what I'm hearing. Are you ready for everything to level out and for the end of exceptionalism? Are you ready for just basically existence as it were? And something like, um, you know, like Rob, you were talking about Wendy Williams. Yeah. And her part, and I started thinking about it. I wasn't thinking about the Wendy Williams show because honestly, I, I really haven't had much use for her ever. I'll be honest. I feel sad. It's sad seeing anyone in the situation that she's in right now, seeing people like turned inside out, essentially, that were once vibrant, but she's never really been my, my cup of tea. Right. You know? Actually, in the very beginning, she was. So when she turned with the fa- until the fame monster caught her, she was. Yeah. Because she was kind of she was kind of goofy and off the cuff. I remember when we were, and this is just the way my memory works. We were going down to D.C. You, me, and Martin. Okay. The thing was Thanksgiving break or whatever. And she was on the radio. We driving out of New York City, and she was on the radio, and she was talking like, she was talking about like cartoons and shit. Like she was, she was in the beginning, she was different than everybody else. This is before yeah. she became. Gossip Queen Wendy, that's right. right. Like she was just doing her own thing. Like, I, mean, I don't think she. I think she was on the, on Kiss FM talking about Quick Draw McGraw, and we were like, "Yo, she's bugging out." And she's like, What's up with this chick? Right. Wow. Yeah. One time she was, and then then the fame bounced got her, and you know, you all know the rest. Yeah. You see, well, this is why you need a circle of friends to remind you of things that you actually like. I was actually wrong. You remember the time we actually had good feelings from her. And all I really think about is all the nasty gossip and all just like the talk. I'm just like, I've never really been into gossip. I remember when she, she did her little piece on Craig too, on his situation at one point. And that was just like, eh. it's just always messy stuff. So it's like, it's sad to see, but but like she said, the way they're doing her is wrong, though. How do you feel about that situation with her family? Not that it really matters. It's not anything that's important. But to me, it is important. And 
The reason why is because of exactly what Wendy said herself. She was like, if they can do this to me, they can do it to you. So, yeah, I mean, we, you, a lot of us, man, like the cold reality is that you're only as good as what you bring to the table only or only as useful as what you bring to the table. And, right. you know, it's, 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 it's a hard truth that I, I think men have a better understanding of it um, than women typically do. But I mean, if you're a Wendy Williams type and you pulling in like hard cheese, like she was probably pulling in, then yeah, at some point you, on some level, you just kind of the breadwinner and people look at you as that. And then once your, once your reign is over, now they trying to take what they can get and try to latch on to the next teeth that they can drink from. Mm. Rob, you think that they should like, um, some of those people should probably let her go at this point. You know, I, I, I'm I'm assuming that they just squeeze the last possible dollar that they can out of Wendy Williams as a as a professional entertainer, and that they gonna let it, they're gonna move on to the next one. They have to go find something else to, to suck on. But mm-hmm. I, it, you know, I was I was appalled watching it just because I couldn't think of any person. I'm not even sure that I could do, I could put my enemy on TV in that condition much less somebody mm. that I claim to love. Mm. Like you would want to protect them. You wouldn't want one second. Once there is not one second of video in that show that I would go, Hey, you know what? This makes them look like a, like a good person. Like they're, like they're turning their life around. We should put this on TV. There's not a second of footage in there that I can think she, of that would qualify like that. But she was complaining about the fact that she didn't have a spotlight and she didn't have a voice. It was the only time that she actually felt like she was quote unquote, alive per se oh yeah but at the same time she's probably not the best person to make that call right now it's unfortunate when you you run into that thing like you you let a person play out the string the way they want to play it out or do you intervene and and protect them well people some people you can't protect them from themselves which really seems like she's that person right now I i wish i had someone who knew a little bit more about conservatorships like you know on the um on the show right there i should have done some research i could have what someone on because um there's been a lot of talk about conservatorships and what's going on with her situation it's like she doesn't really have a say in where her money is being sm- spent correct is that basically what she's right saying? now yeah i mean is All that her right? spending has to be approved and guided yes like what are they saving it for isn't the money that she made supposed to be for her heir? What exactly are they saving her money for? What are they saving it from is like my question. Are they saving well, it from ever going into the black community? You know, what What the fuck is it? I, I, I think that, you know, she's got no income now. So what she has in theory has to last her the rest of her life. Okay, and but so what matter? they're looking at how fast they look. Well, you know, I mean, obviously, for the rest of her life is only six more months. You can go out the door a lot faster than if if it's the next thirty years. Mm. Like some of their beef was the the type of spending. Like supposedly it was like a thousand dollar, a hundred thousand dollars on like um, Grubhub or Uber Eats, one of those that was spent in one year. You know, the first class flights back and forth. She didn't have an income anymore. You know. Right. She can't live like she can't live like she's making fifteen mil anymore. Right. You know, well, it's not it, like she's gonna get syndication on those shows. Those shows are dead and gone. So right. I mean, with that said, with that said, you know, when her family were when her family members, uh, in particular, her son was looking over her finances. Is there some financial literacy that he could learn that he could take it over? I, I I don't know what the process is by do we, which do we know. Maybe he has it already. Well, he had power of attorney. No, I'm saying maybe he's and financially then, literate like that. And then they stripped it from him. He was her, he was not. he was her guardian, and they stripped it from him because he's the one that they said they they accused of spending like hundred thousand dollars on like Uber Eats in a year. Mm. Well, mm. I mean, if you have a personal chef. How yeah, much personal. does a personal chef make? 
All depends what you you could negotiate, yeah. but probably like seventy five. I mean, my point is this: like, there are people that are living here in the suburbs of, on Long Island that spend a hundred thousand dollars on the Uber Eats last year. Yeah, but they obviously right they have now. the income to support it. You know, she doesn't. She's not going to have. Not only is she not have. There's no, in the condition that she's in, she's got no hope for any future income. That's Money's only going one way in her account from now on. Out. Right. Right. So what's? I mean, I I I think we, I don't because I didn't see the I didn't see the the doc. So what's what's her, what's her financial status? I mean, I, I'm I would guess that she has some investments that you they, know she they, could. There, there's a conservatorship. All her money is controlled by Wells Fargo. So there's a guardian who they have to meet with once a month who sort of directs and appoints her spending. She does not have a credit card herself. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. So, and it looks like it was sort of, you know, her family had her down in Miami, her son had her down in Miami. Seems like her manager and her, the people who were associated with Wendy Williams, the business, fought for this conservatorship and pulled her back to New York. Right. When she was down in Florida and she was basically um, sober to a certain extent, she was, right? She was more sober. Her son was fighting to, to try and keep her sober, but also staying on top of her, all of her medical appointments and, and trying to do stuff to help her, um, you know, stay as sharp as she can. Right. So the business of Wendy Williams is, is more important than Wendy Williams herself is what it sounds like. Well, essentially, that's, what it looks, that's what it looks like right now. Yeah, if there's no business of if there's no business of Wendy Williams, then they've already decided there should be no Wendy Williams. Mm. You know, I I, Sad, I just can't believe that they would that they would do that to they'd put her on blast like that. But it had me thinking, and I you know I asked John this earlier. Um, she was top of the world for twenty years. She blew it out. Mm -hmm. If you knew you could be top of the world, twenty years, you're gonna pull in millions of dollars. You're gonna be able to get on private jets. You're gonna go to parties with people you only see in magazines. But the ending's gonna be hell. Would you take the deal? It's a good question. Twenty years, you're gonna be fifteen million dollars a year for eight years. Probably make you know. Three to five for six of those, you know, make two million dollars in the beginning. So, right now, my my answer would be no. I wouldn't want that. Mm -hmm. And and I say that because, for me, the money is not the money is not the thing, right? Like I, peace and happiness are are far more important to me than than money. And it it just seems like a lot of turmoil in in her. It seems like there's always been a lot of turmoil around. Her. Oh yeah. I mean, but you know, when you when when your livelihood is talking shit about other people, then you're going yeah, to draw. You, that. you got bad energy around you. You got you put right. you put it out there, so there's going to be bad energy around you. Yeah. So yeah, you can miss me with it. If 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 I, if I'm going to die badly, nah, I'm out. Over time, like it, it, you know, if I'm gonna get hit by a bus, you know what I'm saying? Then cool. Uh -huh. If I'm gonna get hit by a bus, and that's gonna be that. But if I'm gonna be, you know, had walking around not, not whatever yourself, else, yeah, yeah, yeah no, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm out. There was, there was one scene where she wanted to go get some vapes, and they're like, "All right, there's a store right by the old Wendy Williams studio." They pull up on it. This ain't it. They said, I don't know where the hell you're taking me. I told you to take me past the studios, whatever. So they, they pull off. They do the loop around the block. They pass the Wendy Williams studio. They come back to the same store. Where the hell are you taking me? This is the store. We just went. I told you to pass when We just passed the studio. We passed the studio. We made the terminal right here. This ain't, in her mind, this ain't it. This ain't the store. So now she's going off on them. They go in. They try to get the vapes. Of course, this ain't the store. So these ain't the vapes. Guys, like their driver's trying to tell her, like, hey, you know, these are vapes you get here all the time. Basically starts cussing him out. Like they did three laps around the block. Mm. Before the producers finally came in and said, yo, 
we got to call it a day on the shooting. Like we got to, which was also a strange scene too, because it seemed like the van that they were riding in, they were basically putting her out of the van that they were riding in. And they said they were wrapping for the day. They were like talking, they were negotiating how they were going to get her out of the car. What? That's what it seemed like. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I, so I, she's I probably know. fronting on the on the car point too. You know, she ain't being driven around and escalate on her own. Yeah, it's a mess. Yeah, it's a I'm, mess. I, I'm out on watching it. You know, I don't, and I'll I be out on watching a lot of things only because I don't feel like I'm going to glean any more information from seeing the visual than just from hearing the parts that I don't even want to hear. Mm, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I, I watched it because I watched it because Rob suggested that I take a look because he was talking about the estate stuff and the estate angle, and I couldn't watch it even as I had it on. I I really didn't watch it too closely because to me it's like it's um it's like grotesque. It's like macabre. Yeah, it's like it's not stuff that I would normally, you know. People like they always wait for your downfall. And when you asked me the question, I didn't answer it earlier today. And I think that I really answered that question 20 years ago anyway, or probably closer to 30 years ago. I think I probably already answered that question. I I would rather be here today. Because when you're in that, when you're in those, in that, in that thing, like, you know, the survivors, that's good. But how about all the, all the people that didn't survive that shit? Mm-hmm. You know, all the heads that ain't here no more from that time based upon, you know, bullshit like, you know, Wendy Williams putting shit on blast. Feelings in the black community is something like, it's serious. We're seeing it actually, we're seeing it actually go from your mama's house to the streets. We saw that in Kansas City this week, last week, Mm -hmm. or, you know, it was two groups of heads looking at each other. And I, it's like, to me, it's like, yo, bro, there's no money involved in it in that whole situation. It's like, why why are we staring at each other? You know what I'm saying? To see who who's better looking. You so it's like almost like who shot Tyrone in real life. It's like manifesting itself. And you can show, you can show. I I bet you most I bet you every person that was involved in that shooting watched who shot Tyrone on Netflix. And still, it's like, just because he he looks like you. And that the type of hatred and that type of like conversation, the way it's like Wendy Williams, Wendy Williams was a part of talking down on a lot of black people for a very long time to get ratings. Right. But it, so it's, I mean, but it's, it's, it's been, it's been documented that negative kind of like negative press gets more, it's better clickbait, right? Like if, if you, if, if you have a negative com, if somebody says something on like social media and you have a negative comment about what they said, your comment is more likely to be looked at somebody more likely to respond to it. You know what I mean? So people people just kind of respond more to the negative because, you know, I think on some level, you just want people to be doing worse than you are. Yeah. You know, so. She saw, she saw an avenue that was wide open. There was nobody who was kind of doing that, who was kind of filling that role, like spilling the tea on the black performers. You know, mainstream, right. mainstream media was never going to touch that. So she took the shortcut. You know, I, I'm not mad at her. Like, that's. You know, the free market system is whatever's viable. She saw a viable lane, she took it. You know, she's gonna pay for it with her soul, but that's neither that's neither here nor there. That's a choice. You can pay with it if you want to. You can pay for it with your soul. You know, if if that's the choice that you make, if you feel like yeah. if you feel like that there's value in that, then sure. Yeah, but more than likely, at the age that she made that decision, she just saw the lights. And didn't see the uh, the truck that was you know the lights were attached to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, they say there's light at the end of the tunnel. Sometimes it's an opening, and sometimes it's a train. 
Right. It's tough. Nothing is free. Nothing is free. You know, I mean, what does that say about our culture? Our culture that envies people who are quote unquote stars and famous and knowing that in order to get to these spaces that they're sacrificing so much of themselves. And like really honestly, over and over, we see it again. These people are essentially inside crumbling, falling apart. Yeah, but all we see is the glitz and the glamour. Like nobody, nobody knows the real cost of things. Like only you know how hard you had to work to get where you are. So everybody, to everybody else, it's just, look at that person. They're so talented, they're there. You know, I want to be there. But they don't know what there actually is, or what it actually costs to get there. And there's a there's a serious like um, lack of desire to even know, like what that journey is like. The journeys don't matter anymore. The pathway doesn't matter anymore because AI is coming in to fill in the gap for you. So with that AI experience, with that, and what you already know or what you already believe, we're in a new world right now. That's crazy, yeah, bro. But I, there, you know, there, there, there has to be some, uh, like the, the, the path has to mean something, you know. Does it? I, and it, it has to. The path is because, everything, but we're a goal-oriented right. society. Right, but but goals move, right? So once once you hit one goal, you know, okay, cool. Now I got that. Now, now let's move. Let's move the goalposts. But. If if you're doing something for a, a a a purpose, that's something different than doing something for to reach a goal, right? Mm-hmm. Like so so as a musician, right? As as a musician, if you get on a record, cool. Now you're trying to get to Carnegie Hall, cool. Now you, you know what I mean? Like like yeah. the, the goal should move. But if you're just trying to make a hit record. If that's what if that's what your end goal is, then you know you make a hit record and then you you'll just be a one hit wonder, but you'll always have that in your pocket. Mm-hmm. That you did so, that thing, yeah. Right, but but for that it's hard for to that make person, a hit record. Right, but and uh, that's what I'm saying. For that person, that journey meant something. Yeah, you know what I mean. If all yeah. he wanted was the hit record, but if you if you're trying to get to Carnegie Hall and then. Uh, you know, play for the Queen of England or whatever, whatever the other thing you may want to do, and you, and you accomplish all that, then that journey meant something. You know, it's, every journey should mean something, but most right. people overlook it because they're so busy on focus that what's the end of it, and that's how well, people wind up missing their lives. Well, I think it's the disparagement of the journey right now that's really the gap in between what actually is and what needs to be, what needs to actually happen, because they don't see any value in actually getting up and doing it like it's easy for us to talk about it like yeah we understand like the journey is important it's funny it kind of it it molds you into the person that you would be but right now they're saying that okay listen to these old motherfuckers talking because there's no need for us to be molded into different people we want to be the same we all want to be like you know we want to all go jump cam newton you know, oh we want to be that guy. We want to be that guy. That's what we want to be. That was so disrespectful. I mean, from because from what I heard, it was his camp. Yeah, he can't. He oh my god, that's the most. And you know, I I saw I saw the video. Kudos to Cam Newton for not banging the shit out of these dudes. Absolutely going ham right? on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because that's six six two fifty. Hit different, mm-hmm. you know, because the six of y'all couldn't even. I, I know everybody's talking about how his hat never came off. The six of y'all couldn't even knock the man's hat off. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like if he if he like, had really wanted to hurt somebody, mm-hmm. there would be some hurt so, people today. He he he'd, 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 he'd stop looking like fucking witchy poo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But the ultimate disrespect, though. You know, it's a, how are you supposed to go back and give to your community and your community doesn't, not only do they not protect you, they actually attack you. But the, so the disrespect is part of the culture though. 
You see what I'm saying? The, 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 and that, I'm saying that, that, that is, is that is sort of sewn into the culture these days. Yeah, like there's there's no. a whole. So I was talking to a school group today. Yeah. These kids from from local high school came in, and my man was like, "Oh, you know, y'all were watching last year. You went to the World Series." This one kid goes, "But you lost." And that's kind of like sports talk radio. Like if you don't, mm-hmm. if you're if you if you're not number one, you're last. If you're not first, you're last. Like Ricky Bobby, right? Like instead of like yo. There were 29 other teams who would have loved to lost the world to lose in the World Series last year. You right. know, only one team's going to be the champ at the end of the year. The journey to get to be one of those two teams to give yourself the opportunity is what it's all about. But that's right. not the way anybody thinks anymore. Did you win? Very binary. Did you win or did you lose? You lost, you suck. Right. Yeah. You know, I have people say to me, oh, that guy sucks. He can't play. I'm like, oh, really? That guy's one of the 750 best baseball players on the planet right now. Uh-huh. Like, he could do things with the baseball that you can't, that you would dream of. You'll fucking run. If he throws a baseball at you, you'd run away from it because you'd be scared to catch it. Uh-huh. But he sucks. Right. But people are comfortable on the phone, you know, oh, Yo, first time, long time. I can't believe they, they signed this bum. Yeah. Or yeah. getting behind the so- keyboard. So, ahead, I'm, what I what I think it because I I hear that all the time and I and I had this conversation a lot because I'm one of those I'm one of those people that doesn't believe what I hear from like sports radio. So keep in mind we if we if you're talking about let's let's pull whatever John Smith plays for whatever team you can say John Smith sucks, right? But you have to understand that John Smith, if he does suck, he sucks in the context of playing professional basketball or baseball or football. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With, like you said, the 750 best people on the planet doing what he's doing. So, yeah, maybe out of those 750, maybe he's number 722. Right? Mm-hmm. But where are you? <laughs> on on yeah. that list, right, right, you know right, right. Well, if so, you you know what, if you try to like, you guys are talking about providing context, and that's not what they're what they're talking about with context. Context isn't what that idiot blurted out when he said, "But you lost." You know, context would be like it took you X, Y, and Z. Context is really what the the best parts of sports and any conversation is really about if you're not mm-hmm. talking about context then what are you talking about like really we talked about just like going for example just what we talked about tonight we talked about wendy williams but in context we talked about how she's perceived by different people and me myself basically saying that hey i never really dug her rob reminded me of a time that we did dig her, that i did dig her at least on that that afternoon, going all the way into the people making money about it and why they may have motivation to actually do that. Most people aren't doing that. Like you said, Rob, they're just saying, but you're lost. They don't know that the general manager had to come up with a plan and they had to sign contracts and the players had to train a certain amount of hours off season and they're traveling 162 games plus playoffs and all that other shit. They don't care. No, the fan, the fans don't right. care. But that's, that's I, I always tell people it's about sports radio, like once upon a time, you went to a game or you watched a game and your team won and your team lost. But if you had a good time, you had a good time. Again, right, we right. to the game, we bugged out. It was cool. Yeah, sometimes you don't even remember where they won or lost. But now, right. you don't. It's not worth going to the game if they're not going to win. Well, why do right. I go? They're not going to win. What? 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 what they're not serving. They're gonna. They, they're gonna. They're not gonna serve beer today. What? They, they, they stop selling right. hot dogs and cheesesteaks. Right. What's that about? But that's that talk radio mentality. That very binary. They win or right. they lost. The hot. The hot takes. Well, that's part. That's the whole part about like what Grant, what you were saying about the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl being exclusive, right? So, and and to to that end as as well. There's there's a lot of so de- clearly Detroit didn't make it to the Super Bowl. Okay. But there's a lot of as a as a person who is a, a casual observer of the Detroit Lions. I am not a Detroit Lions fan, 
never have been. I love Barry Sanders, but I'm not a fan of the Detroit Lions. However, as a casual observer, I've had to talk several of my fan friends off the ledge. Mm -hmm. Because, listen, my man, you didn't expect them to make it to the championship game. Right. Right. You didn't expect them to make it to the NFC championship. They gave you they gave you meaningful football in January in Detroit, which is unheard of. You haven't had it in 35 years. Mm -hmm. Mm. right so if they gave right. you that look enjoy the process b yeah. next year they, they they may or may not be better next year they may be they they got three options they could either be better worse or the same right but next year in, enjoy the process again my man let's let's ride this thing out it's not just a it's not just about as much as it is about simply w about winning a championship sometimes you have to learn how to win Right, 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 and that learning how to win is losing, and that's part. And that used to be a part of the journey that the whole city of Detroit would be looking forward to, like actually experiencing. Right, but because right. now it's like, but the world is so small now, so it's like Rob said, you either you win or you lose, right? Yeah, there's no. Well, I, there's, and I think no. I think a lot of that, man. I'm I'm telling you, a lot of it has to do with gambling and sports. Mm. You know, like they like they just passed the thing in uh, was it was it Ohio or somewhere? They passed the, the law that now they can't do uh college players. They can't do a, a individual player prop for college anymore. Okay, mm. right. So mm -hmm. if I mean, and and it makes a difference. You know what I mean? Like I mean, they of course they did it because college players are they they in their minds they're easier to get to point shave and fixing games, whatever you can, you can kind of make that happen with a poor college, a college student that's making no money when the coach is making 10 million a season. Mm -hmm. Right. So why not, why not throw the game and get this hundred grand? Right. Right. But the, the, the marriage of sports and gambling, because it, it's not new, but it's new on this scale. Right. It went from a couple of cities. It went from like Las Vegas and, Atlantic City, mm -hmm. and it, it went nationwide, like yeah, seemingly it overnight. Like it was you could do it, but you had to know somebody, right? You know, and you yeah, had yeah. to you had to play around with the edges of the law to do it. Yeah, yeah. Some Whereas you now, heard that you sitting in your car, everybody sitting in their car, you can do it while you're sitting in class. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, I, I, go ahead. no, I was just gonna say, I think all that matters, man. It, it's it's all part of why everything is so polarizing right now well i i look at it as a i look at it also as a sign of a bad economy that they allow gambling to essentially become nationwide overnight and that's part of part of the reason is because they have to keep those tax dollars going in and you know back in the day the mob used to run that stuff and they ran they used to throw they used to throw mobsters in jail for the same thing that the government is now benefiting off of. Well, I mean, that's the lottery gambling. too, isn't it? Yeah. The lottery's right. just the numbers. Just the numbers, mm -hmm. right. You know, you just basically, you're knocking out, once again, you're just knocking out the small enterprise. But, you know, I, when you, when you talk about sports and like your Detroit Lions had to come up, my Brooklyn Nets, whoa, these guys are like stinking up the building every night. They're mm -hmm. killing it. And last year we were having conversations. And I think I said it a couple of times on the show. It was like these dudes, they keep talking about they want to get rid of Katie and, and, and Kyrie. And they just want guys that can, that are going there and they're going to play hard every night. And I'm like, I don't think you guys really know what you're talking about. That's not really what you want to see. You know, you think that. And now they're, but. They the around and found out. Yeah, they, they have to ran and found out. And the thing is, they're having a hard time, like, dealing with the fact that, um, you know, that this is that this is a result of bad management. And it's important to understand the minutia and how it actually gets there. So that way you understand what type of team you're actually rooting for. A team that's getting ready mm -hmm. to sell 10% to the Coke Foundation family. Right. You know? after running Kyrie out of town based upon a questionable video. This is not, it's not questionable to them. Yeah. 
You it's know, not compliant. Your 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 stance on Israel has to be lock, in lockstep, otherwise it's wrong. Yeah, and right. you know, and you know, Ben Simmons came out today talking about he's going to give everything he can for the organization, wearing a um, traditional. I noticed the color scheme; it was traditional Chinese um, nationalist colors with a dragon and the Nets logo in the middle of it, and him bowing his head. So, you know, we see where this is going with this team. I might have to actually not have a favorite NBA basketball team in a year or two with the way this shit is going because it's politics. But to me, the reason why I find it interesting is because communism is actually buying into, has actually bought into the NBA because of the dollars that and the market that China is. So they're allowing a lot of different things to happen. And I don't knock it because, I mean, yo, look, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, a, it's the market. Everybody uses Chinese products. It's like you're not, they're not developing stuff in the United States of America. So what are you going to do? You're going to die on that hill? It, it, it's greed. At the end of the day, it's greed. Like, so there's, a, there's the one vantage point from which you're the owner of a property and your job is to expand it and increase money for your shareholders if it's a public company. If it's a public company, your job is to drive value for the shareholders. Mm -hmm. Does the NBA really need to grow into China? Does it really need to capture the Chinese audience? If, we, if nobody ever watched a fucking game in China, would the game change in any way? Would these motherfuckers well, go broke? No. But the way to grow the game is to capture that market. The way to grow your revenues is to capture new markets. It's the only way you can grow it. So well, that's what it's all about. Yeah, the corporate mar that's the co corporate model is to always grow each and every yeah. quarter. So if it's not growing, then it's not doing well. If it's not you growing, know, then it's dying. You know, so essentially, this is the opposite of the of the concept of a mom and pop. When you owned a store and your family owned that store for a couple of generations. But the NBA, those are all private entities. In theory, they don't have to drive profit. But they're running like the, they're running the NBA like a corporation. And right. so the league has to continue to grow. If it's not growing, it's dying. Right. And that leaves it open to other morally questionable decisions. But it is, the pursuit of is, money always leaves you open to question, morally questionable decisions. Uh, there I, it is. I, I think part of it is just the fact that you're losing the fan base here. That's that's part of it as well, because you know people people are not like people are not letting their kids play football. There's there's a, a segment of people that just won't let their children play football. You know, so so smart parents. In order to keep it going, though, now you have this whole NFL Africa movement. Mm -hmm. Right, so you you have to keep it going. You're going overseas. You're playing games in Germany. You're playing games in in England. You know what I mean? You pl you playing these games in these different places, just trying to spark the interest so that you can keep it going. Because as America as America is is move America is moving away from doing things, just period. Right, right. they moving the, away. The NFL from is. The NFL is like boxing. Like the NFL has become a dangerous sport. It was always a dangerous sport. It's become a very dangerous sport. And it's becoming almost like, why would you put your body? If you have any other options, why would you put your body through that? Right. But that's, you that's, know, that's the thing. That's the reason a why boxing people, is not where it was. But a lot of people just don't, they don't have any other options. Or at least in their minds, they don't have any other options. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the best option that's put forward for you. Right, well, you know, it's, the, it's, the, it's the one that you think is one. You, one, there's a joy in competition, but two, the pot at the end of the rainbow is sizable. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like, yeah, I'm going to become a computer engineer. I'm going to write software code. You know, you you're probably going to get a very nice job, and you're probably going to have a very nice life. But if you make it to the NFL, you're going to be rich. Right. It's right. a matter of whether you're rich for a, a very short time or a very long time. It's the Hunger Games. Yeah, and cause... it's the Hunger Games in actual real life form, because for a lot of people, that's exactly how it is. You know, yeah. you're either going to make it or you're not going to make it. And if you don't make it, then 
Well, that's the problem. The overwhelming number of people are not going to make it. Right. Cannot. Well, jobs in law enforcement. Unfortunately, that's uh, actually true. Well, it's it's actually true, but that's one of the reasons why we have the law the type of law enforcement that we have. We do. Yeah, but but now now you you also you you have people pay, making money with the XFL, USFL. I mean, well, they just they just combined. I think um, they did just combine. Yeah. Yeah, but they. I mean, they're, they're not they're making. Trying to do they're some making. Other they're making wait. They're making workers' wages. They're not making right. Right. NFL money. True. Well, it's an opportunity to keep your career going. Yeah. Yeah, my cousin's well, what's, son just signed with a team in Germany. So yeah. what's so he could be if, playing over so there next year? If you the USFL XFL, uh, what you need to be doing is trying to find one of these disgruntled NFL players and pay that man, kind of like uh, the NBA did with uh, who did they who did the who did the who did the ABA get? Doctor J. Okay. George Gerber, who, it was somebody that the ABA snatched from the NBA or something, or vice versa. But that's how that's how you got to do it. You got to get that's the way to get on the map. Buy somebody really expensive. Yeah, because you need star power, particularly in these days and times. You need star power. Pay Saquon Barkley. That'll do it. Yeah. Right, some giant fans will be like, he'll still get injured. <laughs> <laughs> Not over there. Oh man, he'd be running uh, people over in that league, right? Oh, yeah, he most definitely would be. Yeah, man. So we're just about we're almost up, bro. Just about at an hour. Word, word. word. Nice and peaceful this week. Mm-hmm. Nothing really too crazy, you know. Nah, After last week's colorblind episode, man, that episode was a lot was of funny, fun. bro. Oh yeah, it was. So it's funny, Doc. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah most definitely i thought that was honestly i thought that was the best that was possibly the best show that we've done you know we've yeah. done some pretty good shows but that one was actually like pretty good mm-hmm. and everything you know i felt bad for harold you know because he got what he you know but that was bad <laughs> shout, out to harold. <laughs> shout out to harold he was harold. laughing he was laughing he, he actually handled it pretty well you know we got in there pretty deep yeah, man, but nice, quiet. It was a nice, quiet week this week, you know, besides when you consider all the shootings and, you know, um, there were a couple of shootings, weren't there? Yeah, a couple of shootings. And there's always, there's always America, shootings. there's always a couple of shootings. Yeah. Right. That's just Monday. You know, it's just like Oakland and San Francisco. There's always somebody jumping out, breaking through windshield, car, car glass, and stealing the contents of the car. Right. It's just life. 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 Hey, life is what you make it. Yeah. Next week we're gonna have a we're gonna have a pretty good episode. I'm gonna try to see if we can work out. What do you guys think? Is there a hotel next week? So we'll have to see what uh how that works out. Yeah, let's see if we can get in early so we can get Gene in. I miss Gene. Yeah, man. I miss Gene. Yeah. Shout out to Gene Hopkins. Yeah, uh, our, yeah, we didn't turn into a text message relationship. I don't like it. Yeah, <laughs> it's not good. It's not good. Gene would have probably enjoyed last week's episode immensely, too. The colorblind. Yeah. Thing. Oh yeah, he really would have. So big shout out to Reg. Reg Johnson out there. And everybody else that's listening to Board in Trouble, all who knows how many of you. One. My man, John, solo, solo energy today. Uh, I'm, you know what? I've got, because I've got stuff on my mind and I got a grind coming up this week. And like, you know, the feet don't come into the fire and it starts tomorrow. And I almost canceled. You know, because I got to get up and move tomorrow, and I'm not at 100% and everything. So, but you know, I thought about you, Rob, and the show must go on. The show must go, must go on. on. So, I'm not sure why I inspired up. that, but <laughs> <laughs> hey. hey, 
three out of at least three out of four weeks during the week. So, but um, yeah, man. So, born in trouble, yo. Thirty seventh episode, much more team than last week. If you came back expecting to hear more race hustling stuff and things like that, we leave it to other people this week. I think we made our point last week. I really enjoyed doing the show last week. It was a lot of fun. Thank you for participating, both of you. Yeah, you know? yeah we always yeah. here. Yeah, it was a, it was a lot of fun, and um, hey, it is what it is. Born in Trouble, thirty seventh episode. Peace. Peace. Peace.